us cracking big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. We are buzzing today. We are buzzing. The stonk market is open. Penn stonk is through the fucking roof right now, bringing home thy revenue. Speaking of Penn stonks, make sure you support Barstool Fund, barstoolfund.com. I think barstool.com slash fund. One of those two. Helping small businesses stay alive throughout the quarantine. Raised over $27 million thus far, but we're not here to talk about that. They do a lot of New York businesses. I am now a lifelong New York Knicks fan as of yesterday afternoon. Knicks tape, Knicks tape. We're here to drop a Knicks tape. Running back, free agency. Talked about quarterbacks and tight ends last week. This is a deep free agency class at all the positions. Quarterbacks, tight ends, running backs, wide receivers. We're going to do the wide receiver edition on Tuesday because we got we can't do the videos together. Otherwise, it'd be two hours long because we got Allen Robinson, we got Kenny Galladay, we got Juju, we got Godwin. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. We got some good running backs in this class, man. We've got some good running backs in this class, some top tier talent. So we need to break down who we like, who we like to go where, who we like if who we liked to go where went there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm on today. I made a whole pot of coffee instead of just a cup this morning. On the downside, a lot of positivity, but girlfriend's late on her period. I'm just kidding. She's not my girlfriend. She on her own. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling and let's eat. Before we kick it off, I've probably let you know about this already, but we're doing a monster monster giveaway in which one of y'all one of you big dogs is coming out to New York City. Maybe we'll go to a fucking Knicks game, actually. One of y'all are coming out, round trip, completely paid for, completely free. You don't got to pay for a goddamn thing while you're here. New York City, you're coming out to the HQ. You're going to sleep in my fucking bathtub, maybe my couch, depending on how much you piss me off. But thanks to monkeyknifefight.com, we're doing a massive giveaway where I'm legitimately paying for one of you guys to come out and hang out with us for a day, a night, two nights, three nights. I haven't figured out logistics yet. When things calm down and COVID is done, Monkey Knife Fight giveaway. We're also going to get you into a big dog's league. So we're going to do like five different giveaways. One, someone coming to New York City. Two, someone's getting to a big dog league, redraft league with myself, Animal Snacks. We're going to pay for another person to get into a dynasty league. So a big dog's dynasty startup league. If you're not in dynasty yet, we're going to give away a bunch of merch. We're going to give, give away a whole bunch of shit. Literally, all you got to do is go to monkeyknifefight.com and deposit $10. When you deposit $10, you're going to use the promo code BDGE. They're going to give you $20 to play with. So you deposit 10 with that promo code. They're going to double it. You're also automatically going to be entered into this giveaway. You got to play a game on there. You got to go play some games on there. We got the fucking playoff weekends coming up. A lot of good games. We can fucking get down on the touchdown dances and whatnot. I will be emailing out my favorite monkey knife fight picks every weekend. So make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter, bigdogsfantasy.com. You'll see newsletter on the top. I'll email out my favorite picks to y'all, but go to monkeyknifefight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 and then send me a screenshot of your play that weekend or tonight they have basketball they got all the sports out there so whatever games you're playing on there send me a screenshot of it and you'll be entered into the giveaway to come hang out with the homie the homies you'll see the whole fade the public crew i'm sure while you're out here it's gonna be a fun ass time thank you to monkey knife fight for making this happen let's talk free agents again we're gonna do a video after all these free agents actually land where they land and we'll break down the fantasy impacts of those we're kind of just predicting things right now we're kind of just going off the cuff we're kind of just you know talking we're hanging out together and if you're in dynasty leagues this is important this is very important because the value is going to fluctuate like these fucking stonks all right so we need to know which guys are going to be hitting the market where they might be going i think there's a lot of landing spots this year i think we could look at a team like atlanta atlanta they needed a free agent running back last year and they pretended like they got that in todd Gurley. you know fucking like Man, fantasy players each year, I know I already, I already did this fucking video where like the top seven, 10 lessons learned or whatever a couple of weeks ago, but like there are a lot, as I've progressed as a fantasy football player, I don't even know if my player analysis gets better. Those are almost like short-term stocks, looking at individual statistics to try to predict how they're going to do next year, et cetera. There's so many things that, that get involved with, an, with a one-year sample size of player statistics. But there's overall strategy to this shit that, that tends to work year in, year out. And like, it's the same reason why we faded. Like we, we literally had a collective group of guys we were fading almost for the exact same reason. It was a Le'Veon Bells, it was a Todd Gurley's, it was a David Johnson's, it was Leonard Fournette's. It's like people chasing the primes of these running backs. And they think that you're going to be able to rewind the clock three years and get what they produced three years prior to that. 
And it's just so obvious. It's so easy to see coming. And when you avoid those landmines and drafts, it makes it much easier to hit the guys that are actually going to play fucking well. Overall strategy, man, these running backs who are getting older, who have been out of their prime already, right? There's some guys that we'll talk about on this list, like a, like a Chris Carson, who getting a little bit older, but he's only 26 years old. He's not out of his prime yet. And it's not like he's one year or two years removed from his prime. Those are not the guys we tend to fade. But Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, like these guys are were in terrible situations for the most part. They're getting old. They haven't been on the field for a full 16 games in quite a while like they're, they're very very easy to see from far out those that's why you don't invest in those guys in dynasty there were people who drafted those guys and even if you draft like a david johnson who played well towards the end of the year you don't feel good about having him on your roster now i'm telling you like there are certain guys that are so easy to fade in dynasty and yes they might put up a one year nice little something something for you they might get in the kitchen and cook up for you but i'll tell you what smoke alarm coming off the fire alarm's going off the following year. It's telling you there's warning signs. There's warning shots from these guys, okay? Atlanta needs a running back. I don't know why I just went on that fucking tangent. Atlanta needs running back. Seattle's probably going to need a running back. The Jets can use a running back. I think Buffalo is going to go with the running back. A lot of people think they got something in Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. I think that's clearly not the fucking case. They don't even run the ball anymore. They pass the ball to Josh Allen on like 87% of their pass plays. If they get a running back there, a legitimate running back who can move the chains, who can actually make big plays and catch the ball and stay on the field for all three downs, he's going to be a fucking problem for fantasy so buffalo i think is a landing spot pittsburgh is gonna have to bring in someone so there's a lot of moving parts here sam fran because they got a lot of free agents going on so i'm gonna throw this chart up and we can look at all of the free agents and i kind of broke them down into a bunch of different tiers we have like the rb and these aren't necessarily like fantasy rb ones or like real life running back ones they're kind of just i don't even fucking know i didn't really think about it when i did it. i just kind of grouped them into players who i think are probably similar in value different upside different floors and things like that but like Aaron Jones and Chris Carson I think are the cream of the crop when it comes to the free agent fantasy running backs and you could probably argue that Aaron Jones is in the elite tier of his own with Chris Carson probably maybe in that Drake James Conner tier but also I think he's more talented than both those guys but it's going to be very situation dependent where they land and as you can see on the right you have the age of the running back some of them will be turning the next year prior to when like free agency even hits and then you have the type so you have unrestricted free agent which means that that player is free to sign wherever they want you have RFA so guys like Philip Lindsay restricted free agent Gus Edwards Jeff Wilson also restricted free agents so they can get an offer from another team this team that they're currently on can match that offer and re-sign the player they could throw a tender on them which is a little bit confusing we'll dive into that a little bit later into the video but it means that there's probably a higher likelihood that the guys are restricted free agents are like with their current teams doesn't mean that they're a slam dunk to be back but it does mean that there's a higher likelihood that they are back with their current team so let's kind of go down the list and we have the rb1s these guys will likely get signed to a team and become the starter or the workhorse for that backfield on that respective team immediately and they have the upside of being an rb1 in fantasy football i guess that is the best way i can explain this so you look at aaron jones and there's a lot of moving parts here to the situations he's the most tantalizing free agent at the running back position for a few reasons right like he was the RB5 in fantasy this year, RB4 in points per game, so huge impact player when it comes to fantasy football. He was the RB2 in 2019, so he's coming off bike-to-bike -bike fantasy seasons where he was an elite running back option, and it doesn't get more valuable than an elite running back option in fantasy football, thus making Aaron Jones an elite player we need to focus on. There's pros and cons, right? You move somewhere else, and they're likely going to sign him to be the workhorse. And we're likely going to see an increase in volume for Jones, regardless of where he goes, right? Because over the last two years, even though he's been able to put up elite production, he's only averaged 17.8 touches per game in those two seasons. If signed elsewhere, he's probably going to get a bigger role. I'd, I'd expect that number to stay around the same area, but probably boost that up to around 20 touches a game. So it doesn't seem like much, but an extra like two, 2.2 .2 touches per game could be the difference between an extra two, three touchdowns on the year, an extra 20, 30 yards per game, something like that. So it definitely adds up over the course of a season. I think 20 touch per game, Aaron Jones, going to be a fucking problem. A problem. Moving off of Green Bay, though, however, would mean... He is moving away from Green Bay's offensive line, which while Aaron Jones is an incredible running back, he is effective on his own. He's really good at creating yards. He's extremely elusive. He can, he can do everything that a really good running back does outside of an offensive line. It doesn't hurt that Green Bay's offensive line has been a top five run blocking line over the last two seasons. So moving away from there, he's also going to be moving away from an Aaron Rodgers led offense, which lends itself to a ton of goal line opportunities, right? Like last year, Aaron Jones had like a zillion touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. That's because Aaron Rodgers' numbers were a little bit down in the passing touchdown category. This year, instead of having all those goal line touchdowns go to Aaron Jones, a lot of them went 
from Aaron Rodgers to Devontae Adams. Regardless, case in point is if those two things collide, we're going to see like Aaron Rodgers, 37 passing touchdowns, Aaron Jones, 12 to 14 rushing touchdowns. They got on the goal line very often with Jones. There's pros and cons again to him moving uh, out of the uh, Packers offense. It limits his touchdown upside. It limits the run blocking effectiveness that he's going to have, but he's an excellent pass catcher. He's awesome on the goal line. I'm not really worried about his move elsewhere unless he lands on a really, 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 really stagnant offense like the New York Jets. If he signs a Green Bay, great. I do think his upside is definitely going to be pulled down a little bit because A.J. Dillon is clearly going to be a little bit more of a factor going forward, but he could take like the Jamal, I don't want to say the Jamal Williams role because Jamal Williams is kind of like a pass catcher there, but Jamal Williams is also a free agent. So if Aaron Jones does not sign with Green Bay, we have A.J. Cream filling Dillon going to take on a pretty big role he's got he had a chance to eat down the stretch uh, against Tennessee while Jones was pretty banged up Dylan came in 21 for 124 and two touchdowns on the ground and for someone that doesn't like Dylan personally as a prospect like he looked fucking fantastic so we need to pivot sometimes right and it doesn't even matter whether or not I think he's good or he looked good or he performed well the role is going to be there if Aaron Jones is gone. Now, I'm not going to pretend that that game against Tennessee, like they're not a great run defense and it's a one game sample size. But man, if Jones is gone, you're going to have to think that A.J. Dillon immediately gets early down work. And again, in an offense where Aaron Rodgers is putting them on the goal line more often than fucking Derrick Henry sending D-backs on fucking vacation over here so they used a second round pick on AJ Dillon they clearly like the guy and he will have his opportunity to shine now I'm sure the Packers would love to re-sign Aaron Jones but they also drafted AJ Dillon for as much as everyone gave them shit for drafting for the future and having nothing that actually affected them in 2020 or these 2021 playoffs like they drafted for the future clearly they knew Jamal Williams they knew Aaron Jones were both gonna be free agents this offseason thus AJ Dillon looking back makes sense given that they've had a lot of success this year obviously if they didn't have success like they missed the playoffs or something people would be going nuts be calling them the worst front office of all time in three years when Jordan Love takes over as a starting quarterback and uh, fucking AJ Dillon's been all pro for two years like fantasy Twitter is going to take an L for the the 100% hit rate that they have on taking L's they would love to resign Aaron Jones he's been a phenomenal player for them it's going to get interesting because the relative price of Aaron Jones compared to Jamal Williams is obviously going to be probably the biggest factor in re-signing players because they have their center Corey Lindsay becoming a free agent they have other players and other needs on the team that they're going to have to address including probably signing a wide receiver through free agents because they need an impact player ASAP it'd, it'd be nice to use some draft capital on a rookie wide receiver but like typically that's not going to be the one that moves the fucking needle for a team say they lose this week in which they probably will to Tampa Bay plus three and a half is a sharp pick for Tampa Bay because everybody's on the fucking Packers which means guaranteed Tampa Bay lock of the fucking millennium if they lose people are gonna be like oh what did they need in order to get past that final jump the nfc how did they get to the super bowl it's the wide receiver i don't think a rookie is going to move the needle i think they're going to spend in free agency for a wide receiver thus going to be difficult to resign aaron jones and jamal williams and or one of the other williams makes a lot more sense to resign but i'm sure aaron Rodgers is going to be fucking in the ear of the front execs telling them we need fucking aaron jones bike we need him bike we need him bad sign his ass or i'm getting you out of green bay Aaron Rodgers probably has that power at this point. Now, if Jones is gone, A.J. Dillon's redraft ADP is probably going to... There are people that really liked him coming out of college, which means he's going to get an unbelievable amount of hype. We'll probably... Aaron Jones gone. We'll say Jamal Williams resigns. I think we'll see A.J. Dillon's redraft ADP probably surface around the third round. I think he'll probably be in the third round area. In Dynasty, I mean, he's definitely a hold for you at this point. If you drafted him, you're not... I don't think you should sell him high. I'm not eager to buy him either because there is a chance that Aaron Jones does resign. It's a gamble. It surely is. I wouldn't sell AJ Dillon given the upside. I wouldn't necessarily sell Aaron Jones given the upside either. Here's the thing about Dynasty. Like everyone loves to talk about buy and sell and trade and while it's high, buy low, buy sell fucking all of these things, right? You're playing with fire with those things. It's again, it goes back to investing in short-term stocks. You're hoping like I invested in a call. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it back to the stock market. Now I have a lot of shares of Penn. Because I think over the long run, their stock price is going to shoot up to the fucking sky. But I also invested like yesterday for a call option. You get a, a, a given date and you need the stock price to hit a certain number by that date. And then you could sell the rights to like 100 shares. It's a little bit more confusing, whatever. But basically, it's a short-term bet or very short-term bet. And you're betting on like something happening within that range. It's completely a gamble. It's the reason I don't really play DFS. You need a Hail Mary in DFS in order to hit that big lineup. You need something crazy to happen. And like this morning, uh, someone from the Credit Suisse came out and said that like Penn's 
price target, which I don't even know what the fuck that means, is $128. And their stock was currently like 101 this morning. It shot up to, by the time I'm done filming this video, it's probably gonna be like 108 or 109, which means I made a fuckload of money. But I had a, a call option for this Friday. So I needed something to spike between yesterday when I bought it and this upcoming Friday. And it's a complete gamble. Like, yes, I believe in Penn long term. But in order for something to happen within the next three days, I need like Portnoy to fucking do something really wild on Twitter that goes viral. And the Barstool Fund gets a $10 million donation or some shit like that. I would have needed to happen. Complete gamble. Same thing with trying to buy and sell these players on a short term little tick. You're like, oh, free agency. Like, this could happen or this could happen. There's too much going on in this backfield in Green Bay while they're in the playoffs and not hearing any rumors about the negotiations for me to want to buy or sell any of these players. Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams could resign. Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams could both get let go. Aaron Jones can get signed. Jamal Williams can get let go and vice versa. So the overall point here is this. I'm going to I'm going to hold. I'm going to stay steady. And this is typically my point. I'm pretty cool tempered when it comes to trading in dynasty there are some players i do want to invest in but i'm not always look i don't have like a fucking i'm not a degenerate when it comes to trading you build up a team over the long term and you look for the long-term assets you don't always have to capitalize on every little short-term tick that you think hits jamal williams gets re-signed and it's him and aj Dillon. i think jamal williams is like a sneaky good play again but he doesn't have a lot of ceiling it's gonna be the same thing that we saw with aaron jones where like a good season would be a really good nfl running back for the green bay packers you know, 800 yards from scrimmage, five to six touchdowns. It's not anything we're getting really excited about in fantasy football. He's a guy I'd be okay selling. If Aaron Jones walks, I think Jamal Williams makes a little bit of sense to sell because he just like, he doesn't have the upside. When you have guys like AJ Dillon who actually have legitimate like top 10 upside, I don't, I don't tend to sell guys who have that type of upside. Those are the guys that could become league winning players for you, right? Like Jamal Williams never has that upside. So even if he hits his ceiling, and you let go of them and you're like, fuck, it's like, it's probably like a low end RB2 at the best. So those are the guys I like to sell when their stock price hits the highest because they don't have any upside. They don't have any practical upside, right? You want to sell on potential upside that doesn't actually reach the practical upside of things. Okay. That's my Aaron Jones piece. Where can he land? I mean, he can land in a million different places. I could see him in like Tampa Bay. I could see him in San Francisco. He'll probably go to a contender. I'd be surprised if if a team that's kind of like up and coming wants to spend a lot of money on a running back. I think it's a bad resource allocation spot, but we shall see. Chris Carson. This one opens up a very big fantasy role to be had. Obviously, the Seattle Seahawks like to run the ball like I like to take walks on the beach. Carlos Hyde is a free agent. A DJ Dallas, one of my favorite rookie late round prospects of this year. He had like a bright spot this year at one point. I still like him a lot as a, a prospect, but it begs the question, what the fuck is good with Rashad Penny? They obviously love him, right? First round pick and they've really not been able to get anything out of it he is on his final year of his rookie contract it feels like he hasn't played in a fucking game yet in the nfl he has played in 27 of a possible 48 games so he's played in 56 percent of the game since entering the season over the three-year span Uh, this year obviously he was coming off the acl tear we didn't expect much from him but supposed to be bike we didn't really see him down the stretch at all so we'll have to see what goes on this offseason he was a coveted first round pick by them and he will likely get if i had if i had to guess he will get a shot at this starting job i wouldn't be surprised if they re-sign carlos hyde to another one-year deal and kind of let a committee run up in that backfield between hyde and between rashad penny and sees what happens assuming they let carson walk i do think they look to the free agency if it's not hyde if they don't re-sign hyde they will look to free agency or maybe another like late round day late day two day three pick kind in that DJ Dallas range, you could see them look at guys even like Chris Carson, like the thumper kind of guy, um, even though these guys are kind of like a downgrade. You look at like James Conner, you look at Leonard Fournette, even like a Gus Edwards, I think would fucking fill that thump God role pretty well. I think they have their style of play. They know what they want to do. We've seen it for the last fucking 10 years between Marshawn Lynch and Chris Carson and Thomas Rawls. All these guys, are the same thing. They're big, they're thick. They run motherfuckers over. I don't think they're just going to start handing it off to these elusive scat backs. Okay. So look, look for that to be happening. I hope Chris Carson gets paid elsewhere, man, because that man is given his mind his body and his soul to the fucking turf in seattle but welcome to the life of a running back honestly i'm not really going to get into too many predictions i almost feel like it's like a waste of time if i do think i see like a really good fit somewhere i think chris carson in buffalo would be fucking awesome i think chris carson running behind josh allen would be incredible that'd be my favorite trio in the nfl stefan diggs chris carson and josh allen they'd be unstoppable but i really hope he gets a contract man because he really has given fucking everything he has this man has probably probably gonna have cta in about four years so I hope he gets that fat contract. Moving on to the RB2s. Now, these are the next group of guys where I'd probably be surprised if they landed 
back with their current teams, uh, but they have the up the upside. I wouldn't say that they're immediately going to be the starter for their for the new team that they land on, but they more than likely will. They have the upside of being the team starter and being a workhorse, but they have a lot of concerns around these players. So for the likelihood of everything coming together and everything hitting the ceiling, it's more than likely not going to happen. So we look at Kenyon Drake. I think Kenyon Drake is probably going to be like the most, if not you know maybe number three ish, three four coveted running backs in the free agency class now drake was playing on an eight million dollar tag this year so he got pretty good money for running back now our, our concern coming into the year was all these advanced metrics for drake like i just didn't think he was that good of a running back and i think he kind of proved that he got a lot of volume he got a lot of goal line work but like as a pure running back making guys miss and creating on his own and being good he just he just wasn't he was exactly what we thought he was he wasn't able to be good over the course of a full season drake will be 27 next week so drake will be 27 next week which is starting to get old for for a running back and especially for paying a running back i think most teams have started to learn over the last couple of years that paying a running back with either injury concerns or durability concerns or effectiveness concerns at the age of 27 becomes a problem for the roster when you look at the todd Gurley's and guys like that so he's not exactly maybe a prize possession on the market but i do think he can get a one or two year deal and become the starter for that like i, th- I think a team like Atlanta kind of makes sense to be honest with you maybe he'll take a team friendly deal and stay in Arizona I'd say it's like 50 50 for him to end up bike here in Arizona and if that's the case he'll probably be exactly what he was down the stretch this year like a, a mid-range uh, a mid-range RB2 because they clearly want to give him the volume they clearly think that he's the guy for whatever reason even when he got hurt and he came bike and Chase Edmonds was playing well they were like nope we're going right bike to Drake and that was that so I think we know how they feel about Drake if Drake leaves this obviously opens up a massive 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 hole in that running back situation for Chase Edmonds you know obviously he gets a big boost and they have shown you know I it, it's tricky because if Drake leaves, everyone's going to assume like, yep, they hit the draft and, and grab a running back. Oh, they go to free agency, grab a running back or something like that. I think it makes sense, but they've also shown the propensity to give Chase Edmonds a really, really big featured workload when Drake is out. So maybe they do let him kind of run it up. Chase Edmonds would obviously be like a really, really, really tantalizing redraft player like you're holding on to chase Edmonds for sure because if drake leaves chase Edmonds' value shoots the fuck up and i do think he has ceiling and upside to be uh like a really 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 good high-end probably rb2 in fantasy i think he's probably a little bit too small for them to actually rely on for him to be like the every down back for a full year and i think they probably know that so maybe a guy like carlos Hyde or a guy like jeff wilson or some shit lands in arizona i think that would make sense to have a little bit of a tandem but even chase Edmonds, because he was never really the one b in this offense like yes he caught more balls but it never felt like it was a timeshare it always felt like it was drake the clear starter and then like chase Edmonds sometimes had his good games i would like to see it be more of a 1a 1b situation if that's the case i think chase Edmonds could be a nice rb too i also think if drake leaves this makes you know benjamin really really exciting and he's a guy that i would try to throw into dynasty trades right the fuck meow Eno Benjamin was a really exciting prospect, in my opinion. I think he's a good player, and I think he could be. He's a seventh-round pick last year. He's a guy who made the roster and stayed on the roster for the entirety of the year. He, didn't, he really got, like, no work this year. But I think he's one of those guys where, like, you, you, you know, in Dynasty, it's funny because, like, everyone, like, I just I just did. I'm guilty of just saying that where I'm like, oh, he's like a throw-in piece for the trade. He's like a throw-in piece, right, that you're, the partner that you're trading with is not going to notice. But, but. Like, low-key, he's kind of like the centerpiece. Like, you know, Benjamin's a guy that I want to trade for right now, so I'm going to make it look like he's not the centerpiece. He's a throw-in, but, like, he's the guy I really want. So you got to almost, like, throw in fake centerpiece trades for another guy and then be like, oh, yeah, and, you know, Benjamin. But we just low-key fucking sneak this. No, that motherfucker's the centerpiece of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, Benjamin is the, is that guy. James Conner, very, 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 very surprised if he lands back in Pittsburgh, uh, even though he's – kind of literally exactly what the Pittsburgh Steelers like want to be and what they want at the running back position he's just not that great of a running back and he can't really stay on the field like he could do everything at like a 5.6 out of 10 but he does nothing at like a seven or above which just can be a problem I also think they really like Benny Snell I think Anthony McFarlane played well this year for the very limited number of touches he got he'll get more run next year with James Conner out of town I could definitely see them drafting like everyone's gonna be like oh just grab Najee Harris Najee Harris Najee Harris it's like listen there's 32 fucking NFL teams it's it's a good fit and I'd like to see it I think it'd be fucking awesome if Najee Harris landed in Pittsburgh but you know the odds are not in the favor of that happening are they gonna draft a, a late day two back I think that's definitely in the in the range of outcomes there are they going to spend a very high draft capital piece on Najee Harris I don't know I could see Connor going to a team like San Francisco uh, with McKinnon and Jeff Wilson both being free agents and playing like that Carlos Hyde role from a bunch of years bike where Carlos Hyde it's kind of similar to James Connor, where they're big, they're not very elusive, but like they're kind of power backs and they can do everything and they can come out and catch 55 60 passes 
without really being a good pass catcher. So I think that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, he could also, I could see James Conner, like I said before, kind of maybe replacing Chris Carson in, in Seattle. Even though he's like a worse version of him, he probably commands a little bit less money fewer dollars so with James Conner out I think uh, definitely opens up the possibility for Pittsburgh to draft a running back but I also think this could be a situation where Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane take over the role of of James Conner and uh, that would be really really exciting so the next tier we have the 1A 1B situation where these guys are probably better off in a committee and they're two very very different players we have Leonard Fournette first guy on this list Leonard Fournette and I don't know. Unlike Leonard Fournette's catch radius, his range of outcomes is very wide. He was someone that I thought was supposed to be good at catching the ball. He's been fucking miserable in Tampa Bay catching the ball. Okay, I don't know if it, his fat ass gets too hot and his fingers get sweaty. He's eating too many Snickers bars and is slipping off his fingers. But he played in Jacksonville, so how can that? How can he move from Florida to Florida and be more sweaty? And don't make no sense. Leonard Fournette kind of stinks. He kind of stinks. But his skill set is wide. He can do a lot of things. He's still young. He's still like 25 years old, and he's playing well enough with the Bucks right now playoff motherfucking Lenny playoff Lenny's eating right now he's playing well enough with the Bucks right now that I think he will warrant a bunch of interest former former number four overall pick uh, and again he's played well in the in the playoffs like Ronald Jones is making Leonard Fournette look like what Peyton Barber the god used to make Ronald Jones look like more of a compliment to Peyton Barber than it is to Ronald Jones but Leonard Fournette is getting his opportunity right now it's coming at a perfect time where heading into free agency someone's going to take a chance on him maybe a team like Buffalo again Buffalo or Seattle I think makes sense I think Buffalo actually makes a lot of sense too so they can get someone with a little bit different skill set than Zach Moss or Devin Singletary so Leonard Fournette leaving I hope Ronald Jones start it gets the actual starter job there next year I think Ronald Jones and Keyshawn Vaughn are going to be a nice little battle even though Ronald Jones deserves to to get the majority of the workload here uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in that Tampa Bay backfield also kind of all depends on the value of the backfield with what Tom Brady does I think he's I think he's back for another year then you have Philip Lindsay he's a restricted free agent Lindsay I put him in the 1a 1b category because that's what we've seen him be basically his entire career up to this point I think NFL teams know you know what he is I think NFL teams understand that Lindsay Lindsay's proven he could be a really good player for an NFL team Uh, unfortunately he's coming off the worst NFL season of his short three-year tenure 118 carries, 502 rushing yards, one touchdown, 14 targets, seven catches, 28 yards, zero touchdowns. Huge fall off, 530 total yards, one touchdown. Since he went as an undrafted free agent, his contract is only three years, unlike most rookies. Let me close the blinds real quick. He came out as a much older pro. He will be 27 in July, despite him only being in the league for three years. As a restricted free agent, Lindsey will be eligible to receive a first, second, or original round tender in 2021. Because Lindsey went undrafted, and I don't know anything about tenders, so I'm just reading this part off. Because Lindsey went undrafted in 2018, an original round tender is unlikely. I'm going to throw this up on the screen, so if you want to pause and read a little bit more about tenders, you could do so right now, depending on what they want to do with him. I definitely don't think Lindsey's best days are behind him, but it's possible his best fantasy days are if he ends up moving elsewhere. Uh, the, the most likely scenario I see is that Lindsey actually does re-sign with Denver on a tender and the price to get him as an unrestricted or a restricted free agent is probably too high for other teams. Here's the thing, like Lindsey's just a fucking dog. I'm not going to doubt him wherever he goes. He was doubted his entire life. He's going to show up to whatever training camp he ends up signing with, whether it's back with Denver or and now he's going to be healthy next year, or if it's a new team, we know what Lindsey is. He's a fucking beast, and he's going to compete to be the starter wherever he goes. He's going to earn a role. Even if they sign him to a shitty deal and they sign him to be the RB3, RB2, I guarantee you he's going to carve out a role where he is the 1B to whoever is the 1A where he is. Now, Royce Freeman is signed through 2021, as is Melvin Gordon, but clearly Royce Freeman ain't it for the Broncos. So I'd be I'd be surprised. If Lindsey leaves, they're definitely going to be drafting a running back somewhere in the middle rounds of the draft to compliment Melvin Gordon. Gordon has sneaky good year this year, man. He was a guy that we liked, and it's kind of seemed like, you know, the, we did the Fantasy Award show on Fade the Public last week, and we had an award we gave out called the Fantasy Farce, where it's like a guy that you thought did well, right? Like you had him on your team, he finished really well, but when you look, when you look bike at it, really wasn't good at all. Like no consistency whatsoever, like, for example, a guy like Tyler Lockett, who finishes like a top 10 wide receiver, but realistically had like three good games and he was terrible for the most of the year. This is like the opposite of that, where Melvin Gordon, it seemed like he didn't really do shit for fantasy. The guy ends up with 1,144 yards from scrimmage, double digit touchdowns, 10 touchdowns, 4.6 yards per carry. He was good this year. There was just so many running backs that were better, but he was good this year. And I think we could see similar numbers to that next year. I think he could be a really good value running back too in drafts next year. If they decide to go with a running, if, if they let Lindsey go, they decide to go with the running back on day three. Melvin Gordon could be one of my favorite values in drafts in 2021. If Lindsey resigns, it's more of the same. They're both 
kind of mid-round picks that I'm not going to get too, 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 too high on. Let's move to tier three. So we have guys that will most likely be depth or secondary pieces, like a low-end 1B to whoever the 1A is for whatever offenses they land in. Probably offenses that might have a starter already in place but need like a breather back. Here's where we have Jamal Williams. We have Gus Edwards, who's a restricted free agent. We have Jess, Jeff Wilson, who's a restricted free agent. Uh, the rest of the fucking San Francisco bike field, we got Jarek McKinnon, Devin Coleman, James White, Marlon Mack, and Mike Davis. Again, these are all dudes that can probably compete for a role on the teams that they sign with uh, best case scenario, maybe they compete for the starter role, but they're not going to be three down guys. Like you could see a guy like Jeff Wilson or, you know, Gus Edwards or Mike Davis, like sign with Atlanta. But if they sign with Atlanta, like they're not going to be workhorses there. They're going to be two down grinders that probably come off the field on passing down. So their upside is limited, no matter what the actual role is that they get on these respective teams. Best range of outcomes is a team like Atlanta or a team like Pittsburgh or whatever, where they can compete for a role. But I think like one of these guys will probably end up on like the Giants backing up Saquon Barkley, right? Like Wayne Gallman is also a free agent. I don't know if he really is going to warrant too much uh, interest out there, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he signs with one of these teams. He should probably be in this tier three category. Like I can see one of these guys backing up Saquon Barkley. Like he needs a fucking breather. The guy can't stay on the field either. So you look at teams like that. So the range of outcomes is like clear backup to competing for, you know, a two down roll or something like that. We have Marlon Mack on this, on this list too. I think I mean, he's, he's proven that he can be good in the NFL, and he's still very young. I know he's coming off the Achilles thing. That's a huge, huge problem because most NFL players coming off of Achilles injuries show an extreme downgrade in explosiveness. We'll put it that way. Uh, it's clearly Jonathan Taylor's time in Indianapolis. I highly, 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 highly doubt they re-sign Marlon Mack. But I do think he'll get a shot somewhere else. So Marlon Mack's a guy that I'm definitely, definitely holding on to in, in Dynasty. I'm not, lo- I'm not looking to move him because what if Marlon Mack lands in like San Francisco, right? They don't bring Jeff Wilson back I think Marlon Mack is almost like a better version of a Jeff Wilson that could be an interesting landing spot I know that's like a very optimistic viewpoint but Marlon Mack is still very young and he's already proven that he could be good in the NFL so I like Marlon Mack I would be surprised if we saw a guy like Jeff Wilson have success outside of the San Francisco offense that San Francisco offense is very intriguing because all of them are free agents except for Raheem Mostert it leaves Raheem Mostert if Wilson McKinnon and Coleman are gone I think the latter two are almost definitely gone I think Coleman and McKinnon are probably sure things to be gone but because Jeff Wilson is a restricted free agent there is a 50 50 maybe a 60 percent chance that we do see him back in San Fran they clearly like him he was very very good for a short period of time this year and Mostert Mostert's a fucking beast on the field but like Kyle Shanahan at this point gotta have worse PTSD than than dudes coming back from Iraq with his fucking running backs man all they do is get hurt he likes a guy puts him in they get hurt he likes another guy puts him in they get all of his running backs literally get hurt every year if not multiple times a game it's actually fucking absurd Imagine having a running back stay healthy in San Francisco for a full 16 games in Kyle Shanahan's offense. They'd have 1,700 yards of scrimmage. With the, like, that's their floor. We saw that with fucking Devontae Freeman. Devontae Freeman's good. It's nothing special, special as a running back. But his peak during his time with Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta, like Devontae Freeman looked like fucking Ray Rice out there. So while we fantasize about it every offseason, we talk about, oh, this guy is going to land in San Fran. This guy is going to land in San Fran. Like this actually might be the season where we see a big shakeup in that backfield because these three guys are all free agents if all three of our, them are gone yeah we like Raheem Mostert but the injury concerns need to be factored into his draft status if Jeff Jeff Wilson resigns, I think he just makes things pretty fucking muddy and I would probably draft whichever of the two Jeff Wilson or Raheem Mostert and it will be Jeff Wilson who goes later I will draft whoever goes later in fantasy drafts next year a lot a lot of moving parts in that backfield there for San Francisco Gus Edwards I mean I hope he signs with Atlanta I like Gus Edwards a lot and I actually can't really tell like I watch him and I'm like he's good but then again like every single Baltimore running back averages five to five point point five yards per carry in that offense that that run offense just can't be stopped it's Gus it's Mark Ingram it's JK Dobbins they all like lead the lead they're all top five in yards per carry every single year because behind Lamar Jackson in that run offense it's like impossible not to be really efficient Mark Ingram was obviously just waived Gus Edwards is a restricted free agent so if there's any restricted free agent on this list I could without a doubt see being resigned by their team I think Gus Edwards probably makes the most sense because they got nothing really behind J.K. Dobbins they want a bruiser back they want they've clearly shown over the last few years that they want someone that could take that early down work and Gus Edwards is primed he knows the offense he's been good for them like there's no reason not to re-sign a guy like Gus Edwards I hope he comes to Atlanta because I love that motherfucker the Gus bus but listen 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 Money talks, practicality speaks out here, and Gus Edwards will probably be bike with Baltimore. Eh, None of these guys are probably worth going too much more into because, again, in in the best-case scenario, signing situations, wherever they land, their upside is probably capped because they're just not realistic three-down players. There we go. 
There we go. This is going to be a long fucking day. This is going to be a long day. We got this video. I got to edit this video and do the thumbnail for tomorrow. I got the Fade the Public homies. We got snacks. We got Animal. We got One Chains on their way to the apartment right now. We got to film Fade the Public. We got to film like two or three skits for Monkey Knife Fight as well. I have to go back to New Jersey today to open up a business bank account. Business is... I'm not even going to say booming right now because I'm, 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 I'm going to need that entire pot of coffee. I'm probably going to finish it before the time I'm done editing this video. A lot of shit to do today. I hope you all have a fantastic fucking day. Go Knicks. Go to BarcelFun.com. Go to MonkeyKnifeFight.com. Throw down $10 and use the promo code BDGE when you do it. I love you all. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Drop some comments. Let me know where you want to see some guys go, where you want to see some rookies land. Let me know how you want the running back landscape to shake up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing fantasy football videos four or five times a week. I love y'all. I'm out. See you on Faith the Public tomorrow.